So it's uh, now my honour to introduce the Minister of Sport and Persons with Disabilities, the Honourable Kent Hare. So Minister Hare represents the riding of Calgary Centre and has represented the residents of downtown Calgary in the Legislative Assembly of Alberta for more than seven years. Born and raised in Calgary, Kent's life tr uh, drastically changed when, just shy of his 22nd birthday, while riding in a friend's car, he was hit by a drive-by shooter, leaving him paralyzed. The life-altering injury did not squash his ambitions, though. While relearning to use his fingers, Kent studied at the University of Calgary, earning his Bachelor of Canadian Studies, followed by his Bachelor of Law in 2001. Kent has practiced law at the pre prestigious national firm Fraser Milner Casgrain. That's it. All right. And became an active community leader working with the United Way and heading the Alberta branch of the Canadian Paraplegic Association. In 2008, Kent was named one of the most uh, 20 most compelling Calgarians to watch by the Calgary Herald. Later that year, he won the race to represent Calgary Buffalo in the Legislative Assembly of Alberta, a seat he successfully defended until 2012. As a Shadow Minister of Justice, Finance, Education, as well as other portfolios, Kent held the government to account while taking an active role in creating legislation for the future of Calgary and for Alberta. I believe I can speak for all of us here today in this room when I say I look forward to working with you, Minister Hare in changing the landscape for work for people with disabilities in Canada. Thank you very much for being here. Well, good evening, and thank you very much for that kind introduction. C'est un grand plaisir d'être avec vous ce soir. That's my Calgary French for the evening, everybody. Before I begin, I'd like to acknowledge that we're here, gathered today on Algonquin territory. The, who have been, and the people here have been building community for generation upon generation upon generation. And I know I, I know we all are proud to share the land and to build community with them here today. As Canada's Minister responsible for persons with disability and as someone who had acquired my disability at the age of 21, I understand firsthand how the impact of disability on individuals families, and communities across this great nation. I understand the work we need to do to become a truly accessible and inclusive nation. While Canada has much to be proud of, we still have a lot of work to do when it comes to fully including people with disabilities in our society. Today, one in seven Canadians report having a disability, and that number will only grow as our population continues to age. Our Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, understands the urgency, and that's why my mandate for me is clear, to ensure greater inclusion of Canadians with disabilities and to develop new federal accessibility legislation. While a new law will get us closer to the accessible Canada we all want, we're already taking action to promote inclusion of people with disabilities, and this includes getting more people with disabilities into Canada's workforce and making community spaces and workplaces more accessible across this country. But the fact remains that if you have a disability in Canada, you're more likely to be unemployed and more likely to live in poverty. Only half of Canadians with a disability aged 25 to 65 are employed versus nearly 80% of the general population. Those that are working earn about $10,000 less in total income than people without disabilities. On top of that, 23% of working age adults with disabilities live on a low income compared with 9% of those without a disability. I understand these statistics all too well. And this journey is not only important to our government, but is important personally to me. I got my first job at the age of 14 as a Calgary Herald paper boy. And I kept a continuous job at various things all throughout the community until I was 21. 
But when my disability struck, it was almost a decade of no employment. And this is despite having a high school and education, an undergraduate university degree, and I think many, many skills. But at that time, my future was uncertain. Even after getting a law degree, there was still no guarantee of a job. But I was lucky. I was hired by a firm that saw potential in me and saw the value of having a diverse workplace. They made accommodations and saw those investments as helping them become a more progressive place to work and provide services to their customers. That firm was Fraser Milner Cascrain, now Denton's Canada. I'm not sure, had they not given me that opportunity, that I would be here today as minister, even though I have, like I said, many skills that others do as well. So I know we can do better. And our goal is to help bend the curve on those dismal statistics by creating an accessible Canada, where all Canadians have a real opportunity to succeed and live a great Canadian life. That's why our legislation will focus on more equality opportunities across all levels of federal jurisdiction. This includes employment, access to buildings and other public safe spaces through a built environment, transportation, program service delivery, information and communications, and procurement of goods and services by the public service. We want to change the story around ability and accessibility. And part of that change is we want employers to recruit, retain, and promote people with disabilities and to remove barriers that may be preventing their hiring and their success. For far too long, people with disabilities have been left on the outside looking in when it comes to good quality jobs. What some employers may not realize is that the disability community contains some of the most innovative and creative thinkers Canada has to offer. I can tell you that living with a disability requires a certain amount of thinking outside the box. After all, we problem solve on a daily basis. This kind of thinking is exactly what we need in the labor force today. People with disabilities, no matter where they work, should be able to do so on an equal footing with any other co-workers. When it comes to the average Canadian, employers make accommodations all the time without even realizing it. Employees are given options to improve their own work productivity and healthy work environment. Whether it's the parent that needs to leave early to pick up their kids from school, the employee that needs to catch that bus home or taking a mental wellness day, or the special office equipment to help with your posture. The list goes on. But accommodations for persons with disabilities is still viewed as expensive and overwhelming for employers. And it's something that usually only happens after barriers have already been built up. Now we all know that disability is complex, disability is challenging, and nothing will be rectified overnight. As my friend was indicating who the speaker just before, you know, success is always one block away and the journey is never over. But working with leaders in accessibility, like all of you gathered here, we will see real change. And we will lead by example. It's our responsibility as change makers to make sure everybody is included. And together, we will make Canada an even greater nation than it is today. Have a great conference, everybody. Thank you. Oh, I guess they're going to throw in a little more French here. Merci beaucoup. There we go.